Chris, uh, we're looking forward uh, to a very challenging week, and uh, we're at, at Texas A&M on Wednesday, and um, this team beat Mississippi State, uh, you know, by 20, and um, they've also uh, had a good road win there at Tennessee, and uh, it's a team that we're going to have to certainly go in and uh, play well against, and hopefully uh, be focused uh, to be able to do that. And then at the, on Saturday at Arkansas, uh team's got uh, two straight wins now and um, playing uh, really well, and uh, we look forward to uh, both of those challenges. Okay, our first question is from Randy Rosetta of the New Orleans times in. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Randy. I got I got two different topics here. Uh, in regard to the Marcus Smart thing, the hap- thing that happened in Lubbock, what do you tell your guys about when something like that happens, and is that part of the reason you kind of urge your guys to go over and help a guy up? You go, uh, I guess, into the crowd like that. Uh, well, big thing for our guys, I uh, try to make sure that they concentrate and focus uh, really uh, between the lines and, and not be entertained by the fans. I think the teams and the opponents uh, that we're facing is more than enough uh, really for us to really be engaged in. And if we um, don't show any emotion or whatever, they tend to have the tendency of uh, going away uh, when you're not looking back or, or uh, allowing them to really be a part of the game for the wrong reasons. And uh, we're hopeful that our guys uh, will make sure that they pay attention and do those type things. And it has been really helpful uh, to us. But it was certainly a really tough and different incident there in in, uh, Lubbock on uh, Saturday. Is that one of the reasons you guys want your guys to go help their teammate up as soon as possible to make sure to avoid stuff like that? Well, yeah, but I I think any time you get yourself caught in a crowd uh, like that anywhere – Want our guys to really go because we're we're a team, and uh, those guys together, and guys usually land in those type of situations because of a hustle play that they've made. And I think it's one our guys showing appreciation for their teammate uh, making those type hustle plays to land in those type of situations as well. And unfortunately, kind of along those lines, what's the update on Malik? Uh, uh, did look he, good when he was walking out. Uh, unfortunately for us, Malik's probably uh, done for the year. And uh, from what we understand, the, uh, the knee damage and it's going to require uh, surgery. And uh, that's probably going to happen today or, or this afternoon. And we're hopeful that he'll uh, get back um, and start rehabbing and uh, possibly be down uh, for uh, anywhere from six to nine months I'm here. Our next question is from Matthew Harris of the Baton Rouge Advocate. Morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, Matt. Uh, just to kind of piggyback off Randy's question, you all were in Lubbock for a game this year. Did you guys or did you all notice that their fans being any more particularly, I guess, uh, tough on, on you guys than any other venue that you guys have been in this year, or were they fairly average compared to what most venues you guys visit? Yeah, I think it's probably about the same. You know, anytime you go in and there, you want to be in a hostile environment. That's part of the, I guess, the experience of uh, playing on the road. And uh, you, you certainly uh, just try and, and block it out and, again, uh, play with, with what's in front of you out there between the lines and fans are going to be fans and certainly be hollering and try to distract you. And uh, I think that, that that's part of it. And that's what they're made up of. And that's, you know, part of their experience in coming to the game and feel like that's, you know, why they're there to, to give their team a home court type advantage, but we try not to uh, um, listen or as much as subscribe to those kind of things to try not be to be distracted. The kind of a question of the day has been just the fan player interaction, just in, in your time in coaching. Have you noticed just how fan behavior has escalated? Has it, or what's escalated sort of, I guess, the vitriol that they do show to players now? Is there a sort of, you know, trend you can see in the past couple of years, or is it just there's more cameras, there's more smartphones, there's more around to document this kind of behavior now? Well, I, I would say it's probably more to document it, because I think even just from my time or, or whatever, having an opportunity to put on a uniform and be in those situations, I think fans have always uh, had certain names in, in venues when you're out there playing because of their excitement and, and being a part of it and uh, been given certain names. I know when I played here, we had the front row lunatics, and uh, I'm sure you know they were always involved in the game to heckle or try to distract their, their opponents as well. 
and uh, certainly happened when I played, so I wouldn't say it has really escalated or done anything. I just think at some time when you have incidents like that on Saturday, uh, it's brought more to the forefront. All right. Thanks so much, Johnny. Thank you. Our next question is from Glenn Gilbo of Gannett, Louisiana. Johnny, what player or players may see more time with, with Malik out? Uh, it's uh, probably going to be, uh, you know, Tim Quarterman, who's played primarily at the point. Some um, of the wing fours, uh, maybe um, uh, Hammock, uh, will have to uh, try and, and see and get him more involved in the rotation, uh, possibly. And, and those would be the two guys that I think would jump out there uh, and be most noticeable that probably uh, will maybe get more time uh, in that position.